this is where I'm going to set up my balsam hill tree. Very first step is to go ahead and use the stand. The stand sits flat and just folds open like this. And you put it at about a 90 degree angle for each of them. And that's it. It's tight enough to kind of just stay that way. This little screw will later be tightened. I'll loosen it for now. That's where the first trunk will fit into. So I'll go ahead and line this up. Now we're ready for the first part of the tree. This is the bottom of the tree, the, the biggest section of the tree. You can see what it looks like. There's about a one and a quarter inch pipe right here. This is the actual pole. It's metal. All the branches are on hinges. The hinges will go down, as you see. You'll see that the actual branches are wrapped in brown thread. And then most of the branches here are actually kind of a, a plastic grass-like substance in the beginning, in the middle, and in the ends, you have some, some different types of needles on the end there. There's actually a little bit of two different types of needles are mixed in to kind of give it a little bit of a fuller look. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the stand. And I can just kind of grab the center and drop it in. I can easily move it. Once I have it where I want it, I can tighten the screw down below. Now it's time for the second section. Same idea, the open pipe. The second section, again, brown thread on most of the branches. Two different types of needles. We have the grassier needles, and then we have the slightly more stiff needles here, the molded needles, and they're mixed in. And again, they're on the hinges, everything just falls down. The top section has a hexagonal bracket for the top section to fit into. Same idea, this is still metal. It just has a little plastic adapter here for it to fit into nice and tight. Here's the end, little hexagon plastic peg. Again, all the way up to the tree. Just kind of slides in, just like that. Okay, now the tree is actually up. Now I have to go ahead and fluff the tree. Because your tree has been sitting in a bag for a year, it does get a little bit compressed. This has actually been a little bit fluffed already. It comes with two felt gloves that you put on. And the reason you use these gloves, you can do it barehanded, but you use these gloves to kind of help with it. Because after a while, it just kind of gets annoying, just hitting all these, all these little uh, branches. And what you basically do is you take your branches and you start spreading them out. You do this with most artificial trees. Because they're all wire, so there's a wire all the way through this branch, I can twist it, I can bend it, perfect for ornaments. But because they're made of wire, once they've been sitting in the bag for a year, they do tend to get compressed. So what you want to do is go through and fluff up all the branches. And this takes about 15, 20 minutes when all is said and done. You get a couple of you together, just all go through on gloves, you can just zip right through it. And you basically fill in any weird little holes, any angles, you set it up so that you have it where any uh, ornaments, any heavier ornaments you want, you can put that where your branches are. At the very top of the tree, there is a single post that is relatively solid. It's not flexible. It's just a kind of a metal rod in there. But all the other little branches around it are flexible. And these can be bent to kind of hold up an angel or hold up a star if it doesn't fit real well on the post. We've never had a problem. We've used two different stars and three different angels over the years, and we've never had a problem. Sometimes we will go ahead and bend these little branches to make a basket to put a little figure here as well. This is what the tree looks like up close. It really does look pretty good. Uh, this tree is actually seven years old, and it still has retained all of its needles. These needles here are actually molded in, so that way they don't fall out very easily. Every so often, we've had a couple little tips break off in seven years, but I can probably count them on one hand, three or four tips at the most. And then inside, again, we do have more of the grassier needles. They kind of help fill out and kind of add to that realistic look of the tree. Now, if I stick my face up to it, does it look real? Well, no, it still looks like plastic. But if I stand a foot, foot and a half, two feet back, if I cover it with decorations, does it look real? Yeah, yeah, it does. In fact, to kind of show you how real this looks, this section of tree right here is Balsam Hill fir tree. Well, I went ahead and actually hid a piece of real fir branch in here. No one in my family saw it. 
it looks, this is a piece of fur, real fur from a real Christmas tree held up against the false fur needles of the balsam hill. And it looks pretty darn good, especially from a foot or two away. When you put some lights on it, you put decorations on it, you really can't tell the difference. My hand is now covered in sap from this. There's no sap on this tree. We purposely chose this tree because it looked the most realistic of all the balsam hills. We love the fir. Uh, again, it has lasted seven years. It is an unlit tree. The reason we got an unlit tree is because if you read reviews of any sorts of trees, the lights are often the failing point in a tree, and we didn't want to have to lose a giant tree that we loved just because the lights went bad. So we go ahead and we manually put our lights on every year, and that's fine because we go ahead and we pick out different lights from time to time. Sometimes we'll do color lights, sometimes we'll do white lights, and it's nice to be able to switch them up between the, the two. So now the holidays are over, and we'll take our tree down. Where do we store it? We store it in our Balsam Hill tree bag. This also came with our tree seven years ago, and this actually is still in good condition, and it still works well. To take the tree apart, you basically do the construction in reverse. You take the top piece off first. Here's the second piece. Just lifts right out. Again, you can kind of flip it. The wall fall down because they're on hinges. Again, roll on the floor, lay it flat, squish it down a little bit. For the last section, reach down, loosen the key down below, and then pick it up and lay it on the floor to go ahead and crush it. And here's your stand. Your stand, again, just push it back together, and that'll be also put into the bag. Larger section, middle section, smallest section, don't forget the stand and your gloves. You can just roll it together and zip it up. Sometimes I'll even just do this. And there we go. Uh, it is big, it is bulky, but that's what you get from a seven and a half foot tree ready for transportation. By the way, here's what the floor looks like after a full season of having our Christmas tree uh, right here in this corner. That's it. You take a quick vacuum, go over it, and we're done. Compare this to the needle drop mini live tree. Uh, and this is just amazing how few needles are actually here on the ground. Here's my tree ready for storage. Uh, again, we got this about seven years ago, and it's held up remarkably well. The tree still looks great. The bag still holds up. It still assembles, and we love the look of it. For you, you have to figure out whether the cost of live trees is more or less that of an artificial tree. But know well that these Balsam Hill artificial trees, they last a long time. They will last more than three or four years. We're on seven years, and I don't see us getting rid of this at least for another seven years because it works so well. It just stands up and looks great. We still get compliments from people, whether they know it's artificial or not. It looks great. It works well. Goes together. Easy to store. This thing's only about five feet high, probably about two, two and a half feet around. Uh, and I just kind of throw it down in the basement under a shelf, and it stays there for the year.